This is the instructional video for the oxidative stress test through urine. So when you get home, you can go ahead and open your kit and you just wanna make sure that you have all of the supplies. There should be a styrofoam box inside. You can go ahead and open that. And you wanna just make sure that you have all of your necessary forms. So there should be some in the back of the kit and your lab requisition in the front. So you can go ahead and take all of those out. Make sure none are left behind. And the most important form that you want to make sure you have is the lab requisition form. Um, so we should have filled out your name and your date of birth. We also should have filled out the um, physician information and have um, also signed it. So um, the only thing you need to fill out is the payment information. Very important, they cannot run it without it. Um, also your signatures. And uh, just wanna make sure that this is checked off. If it's not, feel free to check it. Um, and then also you wanna make sure that you fill in the date that the sample was collected. Uh, all of this will also be highlighted for you so you can easily locate them on the lab requisition form, what you need to fill out. The next form that you wanna make sure you have is the checklist. It's not mandatory, but it's just to make it easier for you uh, to make sure that you are doing everything. Some shipping instructions. The test instructions, which also tells you everything you should have. Things to consider before the test and to prepare. Five steps for the test. And um, shipping instructions. Definitely want to keep this one handy. And uh, both of your shipping materials as well should have your shipping bag from FedEx as well as your shipping label. Okay, for supplies for the test, you can go ahead and take out um, your cup. And the cup should be an elastic band. collection tube, a glove, the collection cup, a pipette, a block, some absorbent material, and your biohazard bag. Now before you take the test, there's just um, a few things to consider. Uh, ladies, if um, you're taking the test, you just wanna make sure it is not during a time that you are on your menstrual cycle. Also, you want to make sure uh, as soon as you get the test, it's just a good idea, you put this right in the freezer um, immediately. It does have to be frozen for a minimum of eight hours. So um, best to just take that out first and get that in the freezer. Also, uh, when you take the test, you wanna make sure that this is first thing in the morning when you wake up. Uh, so don't eat anything yet or drink anything. So taking the test, um, when you wake up first thing in the morning, you can go ahead and um, take the test sample in the um, cup. During this whole test, you can go ahead and put on your glove. Now with the sample in the cup, you can go ahead and take the pipe back. and your tube. 
Now you wanna make sure, um, very important on the tube, that your name is filled out as well as the collection date and time. Very important. Now you can go ahead and unscrew the cap. Take the sample in the pipette and fill up the tube. And you wanna make sure that it is filled up at least to that um, five milliliter line. They do need to have enough of the sample in order to run the test. Once you have enough of the sample in there, you can go ahead and close the cap tightly. And you wanna give it a good shake, I would say for about 10 to 15 seconds. And when you're done with that, you can go ahead and get rid of the cup and the pipette. Don't need those anymore. And you want to put this in the freezer immediately. So freeze the sample for a minimum of two hours. If you're getting it out the same day, just make sure that you do freeze it for two hours at least. Um, if you're sending it out at a later date, um, you can just freeze it until you're ready to send it out, but you do want to try to get it out as soon as possible. So once you are ready to send it out, um, you can go ahead and take your biohazard bag Go ahead and put the sample into the bag. Take the absorbent material and put it in there as well. You can go ahead and seal that right up. You then want to take your block out of the freezer again minimum of eight hours that it has to be frozen. Go ahead and put that into the styrofoam box. Put the sample on top of the block. Put the styrofoam cover on top. And then you wanna take your requisition form and put that right on top. You can go ahead and close the kit. And you wanna make sure that the kit is sealed. So you can either put this around the styrofoam box or you can go ahead and put it around the whole box entirely. Once that's all sealed, go ahead and take your FedEx bag, open it up. And you can actually just put the entire box into the FedEx bag. Okay, there will be some adhesive tape on the bag. Go ahead and rip that off and seal it up. Take your shipping label and you can actually put it on the, the bag itself. Now with your shipping label, you also wanna make sure that your name and address are written on these two lines right there when you send that out. And to drop it off, you can either drop it at a FedEx location or uh, you can call in for a pickup and shipping information should be on the back of your instructional pamphlet. Any other questions you might have, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you should be all set. Results should be back um, a minimum of um, two weeks.